Hey everybody, Mike B here with another video. Today I'm going to be doing something kind of fun that I don't think I've made a video on before. I'm going to be taking this really great, very, very cost efficient and very practical PSA Freedom Rifle Kit that I built several years ago on an Anderson lower. And uh, I have zeroed this thing, but what I did is last winter I was an idiot when I was in my little whitewash phase and I discovered that stuff with lime and salt and water and all that stuff. I decided to put whitewash all over this thing for the winter. Needless to say, it uh, rusted some exposed steel parts and just didn't look good. It kept caking off. So I then removed everything. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rattle can this thing, AKA spray paint. So I know most people are like, Oh, it's so it you Cerakote or Duracoat. Well, you know what? This is a, this is a truck gun. This is one that you don't mind if it gets beat up, beat to shit because I, uh, I bought this thing. I think I have like $375 into this whole thing, including the rear sight. So this is a gun that is just a utilitarian tool. And I really don't care what it looks like. I've done this to other guns in my collection. It's fine. It doesn't affect the functionality. It might look stupid, but I really don't care. It looks a lot better than it does right now with the rem remnants of the whitewash and the rust on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I like to paint firearms. Um, it's not the right way. It's not the wrong way. It's just my way. And what I do is I like to start with a um, whatever color I want the least of. I'm going to put that down as the base layer. I know I could do tiger stripe and all that stuff, but I'm just going to kind of do a, a splotch pattern, um, kind of a blended pattern, which you'll see. So I want this to be mostly for a woodland environment in the summertime, but into the fall and into the late spring, it would still be okay and practical. So I'm going to start out with kind of a, what's called a mustard yellow. Sorry if I'm shaking this right in the microphone. With a mustard yellow, and we're going to start on the stock. I'll probably speed this part up so you don't have to sit there and labor through me slowly, meticulously, not really. Uh, spraying this stuff so we'll test that out all right so i'm going to start on the on the stock right here now obviously it's paint so it looks a lot brighter than what it'll actually dry as so don't worry about that it looks really yellow right now it does darken up into a really nice kind of mustard yellow but that's also our base layer so that'll be the least visible out of all the three colors this paint will actually also uh, serve to preserve the metal a little bit it'll kind of seal it up which is kind of a nice perk of spray painting with certain kinds of spray paint i just have a cheap uh mft or whatever like six dollar seven dollar mag i just decided to it'd be kind of fun if i just did one mag that actually matched this thing Okay, we're going to let that dry for just a little bit, and then I'm going to come back and zap it immediately with uh, a brown, which you'll see. Alrighty, about five minutes has passed, and it's dry enough for purposes that we need it for. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the brown. For this one, I'm just going to be using a primer base, which is really nice. And it's a really good brown for out in the, out in the woods up here. So, again, this is one that I want to be the second most dominant, so this is why I'm doing these in this order. I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to blend it together. Like you can see right there on the buttstock, there's going to be kind of a combination of all three colors in a lot of spots. Then it's going to have splotches of more solid colors. I know it's really not rocket science, but it's for not rocket appliances, but Hey, um, yeah. So just keep going. All right. That actually is looking pretty good so far. Not going to lie. I know usually you take the stock off and get the whole buff or two, but again, that's not visible unless you take it off, and I really don't care about that. This is just, a, again, a utilitarian piece. It's a tool that you use, like, you know, if you're out scouting in the woods for hunting or whatever and you don't want a bear to kill you, carry this. Good for your truck, anything like that, you know? So it's just a nice little tool. I love these cheap, affordable ARs. They're actually very underrated, in my opinion. If you want just a tool that you can hit something with at 100 to 200 yards and it's lightweight and works... Nothing wrong with it. I know a lot of people are very uh, elitist about this stuff, but I'm not one of those people. All right, we'll let this layer dry, and then we'll start hitting it with the green. All right, about five more minutes has passed. This stuff dries pretty quick, the primer stuff. So we're going to hit it with some green, and we're going to see how this turns out. If I'm not satisfied, I'm going to go over it again. That's the beauty of this stuff. This can is actually really pissing me off. It's... Very temperamental. It's brand new and it's acting like it's empty. Got to hold it at a certain angle. It's really irritating. All 
Okie doke. I actually decided I do want to paint the grip. Uh, I'm going to use the primer though, because this is going to be least likely to flake off. All right, so as this is drying, I've determined the green is a little bit too bright and this whole thing is a little bit too bright. I don't really live in an environment that's this light colored, um, a, maybe in the late or um, late spring and very late fall. But I'm going to darken it up a little bit with some um, darker green, it's kind of a cool shade. It's not black. I don't like black on stuff because, I mean, there are shadows in nature, but black darkens things up too much in my opinion. So I'm just going to use some of this stuff. Now it's starting to look like something. It's now a four color scheme instead of a three color, but hey, I think it looks pretty cool. Nice, we'll let this layer dry. I'm liking this a lot better now. It's really looking good. All right, so it's looking good, but it's still just a little bit too tan now that everything's settled and dried. I thought it'd be a little bit less. So we're just gonna hit it with some more of that light green. It's dark enough, but I want it to be a little bit more green. So we're gonna hit it with this stuff and we're gonna call it good on this side. There, that ought to do it. We'll come back in a few minutes. Oakley doke. This is looking really good. So I'm satisfied with this side. Now we're going to flip it over and do the other side. I think for this one, you see the rust and stuff from the, uh, from the um, whitewashing? Yeah, right here, right there. Good stuff. So we'll just paint over that stuff and seal it up. But I think on this one, I'm going to use a lot less of that um, mustard yellow as the base coat because I really didn't have much of it come through, even though where it did come through, it looks great. So here we go. I try to get most of the rust covered because I want to get as many coats on that as possible to stop the act of rust. Um, I, I did scrape most of it off already, but there's still just a little layer of it that keeps popping up. Um, yeah. Now on to the brown. Okay, it's close enough. So, I'm going to do that light green first, make a pretty big layer on that, and then we'll darken it up as needed with that darker green after, after this dries. This can really sucks. You can't, you can't angle it at all. It acts like it's empty, like I was saying. There, I think that's looking pretty nice so far. And we're ready for that final coat of that darker green, just to darken things up a little bit and fill in some lighter spots. All right, I think we are good to go. We'll let this dry and I'll show you the final result. All right, everything is dry, so let's get a closer up look on this bad boy. Yep, I am very satisfied with this. It's just dark enough to be good in the woods and light enough to kind of blend in with the vegetation. It's very neutral, it's got little accents in it. Absolutely love it. Magazine turned out well, too. Yeah. So it went from a rust bucket that had some lime still on it and rust on it and whatever to a great looking little utility rifle. So, all right, let me know what you think in the comments. You guys rattle can your stuff? I sure do, and I love it. <laughs> I know some of you won't be of the same opinion, but hey, it ain't your rifle. <laughs>